Hey guys, my name is Gabby. We're going to talk about Mary Kane's video of her exposing the entire Nike program, um, Alberto Salazar's Nike Oregon project, and women's sports in general, and my experience. Mary Kane is a multiple national record holder and was basically the best runner in the world. I mean, that's what I think. Everybody looked at her and was for sure looking at a Olympian. Everybody knew that until she went to the Nike Oregon project. She basically goes on to say how she was emotionally and physically abused by Alberto Salazar. And like for those of you who don't know, Alberto Salazar was one of the biggest 10K runners in, in the United States and the world. Like he ended up running, I think, marathons. Um, but he designed the Nike Oregon project and it was endorsed by Nike, obviously. He had an all-male staff. They just had the idea that being thinner meant you ran, you ran faster. She was emotionally and physically abused this entire time. That She said that there was no sports psychologist or nutritionist available to her and everybody just referred her back to Alberto. She had public weigh-ins, was publicly shamed by her own coach multiple times, and she ended up losing her period because she ended up being so thin. She had suicidal thoughts. She was not being a nurtured athlete at all. Like, her well-being was not looked out for. Alberto actually ended up denying all of these claims. Now, this is just the tip of the iceberg, people. I was a Division I athlete. Um, I don't know if I should say the name of the school, but I was a pole vaulter. Um, same track and field world, I get it, I know so many people, it's such a big community and I love everybody in the community. However, I'm not a record holder, I'm not the best athlete, you probably don't even know me, but this is why. Yeah, I don't know if I should say the school, but you'll probably find out, like, with the clues, you know. Um, so I had three different coaches in between five years of me being in college. My first year, I was promised a scholarship. And upon the day of me signing, they ripped that piece of paper up and said I would never see that money ever. I was emotionally and physically abused all the time. I was the number one person that the coach picked on, mainly because I was very outgoing. Even from a young age, I was always friends with guys, so talking to the boys team was totally normal for me. I never really got along with girls. I don't know why I always tried, I was always really nice, but everybody hated me for no fucking reason. I still don't know why to this day, why I don't get along with girls. Anyways, I was just that one girl, like everybody picked on me, everybody had something to say about me no matter what I did. And basically I cried almost every practice, like he would pick up my form, he would just always be picking on me like, come on Gabby, let's go, let's go, why are you at the end of the pack, Why? What? what's going on? Yeah, and I like, I always thought it was like to make me a better athlete, like I kept saying this to myself and I realized like, okay I'm getting better but he's still like, this isn't the reason, there has to be another reason, like this is crazy. Everything I did was wrong, no matter what, in school, in practice, if I was sitting in the track, like everybody hung out in the indoor track, we always used to sit on the old pole vault mats. Even if a guy was sitting two mats away from me, like 20 feet, that was wrong. Totally wrong for me to even be in the vicinity of another guy. I started failing classes and like, I was trying really hard, but I had ADHD and my captain basically was like, yeah, you have ADHD. And I was like, hmm, let me look up like what that is. So I did and I was like, wow, that is the spitting image of me like wow and I struggled so hard like no matter how hard I tried I was just failing school and like my advisor put me in all the hard classes and I mean like all the seniors that looked at my schedule were like why are you in all of these classes at the same time this is crazy so I ended up going on my own in the summer to a psychologist and I got diagnosed with ADHD the coach instead of like helping me or acknowledging that I even had a problem. He kicked me off the team for my grades. He made me feel like he made me feel so stupid and dumb and he didn't even want to help me. He just wanted to get rid of me because he didn't want a low grade point average for the team. So he got rid of me instead. He didn't help me. I never saw a psychologist with the team. I never saw my advisor. She never helped me even when I would just barge into her office. Nobody would ever help me. I felt 
completely hopeless my freshman year and it sucked like it literally sucked I remember my freshman year like everybody hated our coach but like we had people on our team who were training like our heptathletes this one girl had a broken foot and he forced her to train her 800 she was physically like limping her foot hurt so bad she was crying running laps and everybody was watching her like oh my god just make it stop so the next year um that coach got fired there was a whole investigation or something like that like two girls wanted to transfer and that he wouldn't sign off on them so they were forced to go to the athletic director and like go above him there was no coach that second year that I was in college which was fine because I was working on getting my grades up I took a year off like actually being on the team well it wasn't really my choice but we didn't have a pole vault coach we didn't have a head coach we just had one coach trying to do everything and it was crazy I was still training solo like I wasn't allowed to train with a team so I was still in the indoor track right after the practice ended and I was training I would go to my local club I would be pole vaulting. I did everything that I could to still be training because I was like, I'm getting back on the team just because my grades were bad. Like it wasn't even my fault. Like I had ADHD and I had no idea. Nobody helped me, nobody realized, nobody cared. I was suffering so bad because of that. My third year, I was a junior and we ended up getting a brand new coach, which was like, I was so happy because I was like, finally, I can go talk to somebody. I can get back on the team. Like I can get back to training with the team. I can get back to having resources. I was so excited to get back and start pole vaulting and training with structure. This guy was a world renowned middle distance, distance coach, and I had so much hope for the team. I had so much hope for myself. I was so excited. Little did I know what was going to happen in the next couple years. He started coaching our team, and we found out that his last team, he cut off all the seniors and he basically like from what our perspective was he wanted to form his own cult of like people he recruited he didn't want anything to do with people that he didn't recruit he didn't really pay attention to them that's basically the vibe that we got and what we found out from I'm gonna say Google um, just research from like I said everybody knows everybody really in the track community like we're a really tight group of people and we try to be really supportive try not in this situation but we try it, it really felt like he wanted to form his own cult of minions that followed him around and just praised him for everything he did he ended up turning the distance team away from the rest of the team it felt like he despised the track team but he only cared about like the cross country team and the distance team he only wanted like his team to look good like it was only his athletes we were basically looked down upon and like his athletes looked down upon us too like the girls wouldn't talk with us in the locker room they wouldn't look at us like it was really shitty environment it was just so stressful so tense there was so much just stress for no reason literally no reason all because like, i'm on the distance team i'm his athlete and you're not and you're never going to be as good as i am i'm sorry i don't want to run the 10k i want to i'd rather fling myself through the air on a fiberglass bowl that's basically how it started was that whole interaction of his athletes looking down upon the rest of the team like it was comp competition basically between the track team and his athletes and there was a, their own competition between his own athletes like they would compete over their weight they would compete about who was his favorite and like he supported that attitude he supported that mentality of like racing each other during practice like when you're tr when they were training their pace they were competing they were sprinting each other just to be the best and he supported that which is like crazy to me how like he pinned everybody against each other and it blows my mind. He ended up cutting our throws coach or like sabotaged her. I don't really know, but we had an, an entire investigation done on her. Nobody really knows for sure what happened, but we didn't see her for at least like six months. And that's like going into our competition season. We trained preseason with our throwers because they had a really good like explosive program 
for their preseason. So we were training with them for the preseason and like getting lean and really prepping and she was so supportive. I loved her so freaking much. My favorite coach today, she really supported everybody, even the athletes that were not hers. She really cared about their well-being. She cared about their mental state, how they were feeling day to day. She would love to talk to you. Even if she was in the middle of something, she would stop everything and talk to you. And like, we really needed that on our team. Our coach didn't want any part of that. Like they fought all the time, but he got rid of her. Like I know he got rid of her. It was just so bad. Like the whole, that whole time was so bad. We had multiple girls on the distance team were well visibly underweight. I don't want to say disgusting because because I don't want to like shame people because it is a mental problem and it's based on the coach's thought which is like part of the freaking problem we had one girl on our team who had a suicide attempt and it like blew over like nobody wanted to talk about it nobody was supposed to talk about it I don't even know if that girl was saw the psychologist but the coach just like acted like nothing happened I remember we had just a talk with the whole team and was like yeah we need to be a team and everyone was like <laughs> The distance girls were like, yeah, oh my god, you're the best. Everything you say is the best. And the track team was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold up. Why are you having this conversation? We know, we want to be a team. Like, we were forced to cheer on the 10K, but nobody, nobody was forced to go watch the pole vault. Nobody was forced to go watch the throws. Not one teammate was there. In fact, the whole team walked by me one time while I was competing just to go sit on the bus. Again, like we were really loving people. We really cared about our team. Like we really wanted to make it work. It was just not a two-way thing. It was a, we're supposed to do this. We're supposed to be a team, but his athletes were not forced to act like a team ever. Like it was all about them. Meanwhile, while all this bad stuff happening, like I'm internalizing it all. I was really becoming a student of my sport. I was watching all the pros. I was watching all the old pros. I was just really watching technique, I was learning technique, I was learning all the drills, I was studying all of their training, and I knew what it took to be a great pole vaulter. And I was trying to do that desperately. And I was actually getting better. Like, after I was talking to my pole vault coach, who I love him so much, he really got me, but like, he didn't have a say. Our head coach looked down on him and like, was just like, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. It was just... It was shit. Like it was shit. So I was actually getting better. The pole vaulters were getting way better because we were training the way pole vaulters should train. He saw that and was like totally intimidated. I remember the look on his face. He wasn't happy that we might score points at conference. He was like, no, my girls are the only girls that are supposed to be scoring at conference. He put so much pressure on us to jump a certain height and that we needed to jump a certain high even to get on to the conference team. We were just stage fright. Like, we got so nervous at meets because we would only be allowed to go to certain meets, even though the distance girls had special meets just for distance, which I totally get. Some of them flew to California because they had amazing runners running and they needed to run really good times but like he just put pressure on us like he did not want us to do well and like I understand having meat pressure and like doing good with that pressure but like it was totally different like he was like if you don't jump that height you're not gonna go to conference if you don't jump this height you're not going to the next meet that's for sure you're not gonna have another chance all the things that he was saying to us was just terrifying like he just terrified us to the point where like we weren't jumping good in a meet every meet we'd go back on the bus and he'd read out like everybody's prs and like say who pr'd and stuff i remember every time he told us that a pole vaulter like pr'd he'd be like oh uh like gabby pr'd and like the bus would be like woohoo but like the throwers and like the field events and the sprinters would be like in the back like yeah and the distance girls would be like mm -hmm, yeah cool i don't know why they hated us so much like i said though like he wanted his girls to be the stars he did not want us to do good and it was like very apparent it, it got to the point where like multiple girls on the team were on anti-anxiety pills and antidepressants and like if that's not a red flag i don't know what is but he pinned us all against each other and like not just the field events but like like i said his girls were like fighting each other like to be the best and his favorite there was no 
team morale. There was no spirit. We didn't do anything as a team. And he totally encouraged this. And then our sprint coach just happened to be under investigation too. It was so bizarre. Like he replaced the throws coach because she never came back. Like nobody knows what happened. So he just got another throws coach. Like weird. Somebody who you really wanted to be the throws coach just so happens to show up. And then the sprint coach goes missing. Like, he's not allowed out practice either. Like, that's really weird. It wasn't fun anymore. Practice wasn't fun. Being on the team wasn't fun. It was crazy. How terrible the team spirit was and how the energy was in the locker room. It was disgusting. So this happened, to, like, this was after my senior year. This was my fifth year when I took a fifth year because pole vault was going so freaking well for me and I was so excited for my fifth year and he destroyed it. I was working my butt off. I was getting such good grades. What he did was he forced us to lift with the throwers, like the lifts, like the physical lifts to the point where I gained personally 15 to 20 pounds of muscle it threw my entire jump off like I was slow on the runway I was just trying to fling 20 extra pounds through the air like that's not good for pole vault like it's just gonna throw your entire strategy off and technique like it was so bad and he knew what he was doing and I told the lifting coach I said this is not what we should be doing we should be doing a gymnastics type lift we should be doing explosive fast leaning out like everything that i knew because i had been in touch with the pros i had been learning from the pros i had been learning from their training i knew what it took to be an olympic pole vaulter nobody listened to me and he was just like well go talk to the head coach and i did and he i went into his office like five different times and he just didn't care because he was like, you better make it work because you won't be going to conference. You won't be going to any meets. And I was just like, you're not gonna say anything? Like, are you kidding me? Like, you don't care if we jump good or not. Like, he didn't even not care. It was so weird. Everybody should be treated the same regardless. Like, I don't care who you are. Like, you should just be treated equally in it and you should have somebody looking out for your well being. And we just, we're not treated the same at all and I got pulled into his office multiple times just because the distance girls would like say something about me this girl told everybody that I was sleeping around even though I had a boyfriend and she told that to my boyfriend at the time and I was like you are an idiot and I called her out on it and she went to the coach I have to add that a coach should never be involved in your personal relationships and I was like why are you even going to the coach like this is your fault and so she tried to get me in trouble for something that she did. He would like make me feel bad. He would make it like it was my fault. And I was like, I didn't even do anything in this situation. Like I literally stuck up for myself. And you're gonna make me feel bad because one of your girls thought it was a problem. They would just do things purposely just to try to get me kicked off the team. He totally lost at this school. He ended up quitting this school and going to another school. And like, I'm almost positive somebody warned the athletes at that school and I think it, they were from the original school that he was at because he causes a lot of problems. Obviously, from my own experience. To this day, I feel like I'm an amazing athlete. I still would love to keep pole vaulting, but I live in Miami and I don't know anybody in Miami for pole vault. I would love to keep training. But again, I was abused emotionally and mentally. All the girls were. So many girls were relieved after they were done that they were just like, I'm never gonna do this again. I don't even wanna run, like, ever. I totally get it. Like, and this whole thing is just, it just goes way past that professional Nike Oregon project. Like, he is tied to Nike too. This is way past the Nike Oregon project. This is all the NCAA coaches. Our school covered this up. I quit the team because I was so fed up with all this BS. It was all about the coach's ego. Like, he only cared about the way we performed because he didn't want to look bad. He never looked out for anybody's well-being, ever. Like, he really didn't. And like, my parents were even appalled at this behavior. So many other parents were just fed up as well. And I ended up quitting and everyone's like, oh no, you got kicked off again. Like, no, he pulled me into his office. He's like, do you even want to be here? And I, I just like, I remember like looking around like, you know what, no, I don't want to be here. 
this is awful. Like, I remember it perfectly. Like, it was yesterday. Like, no, I don't want to be here. Why the f would I want to be here? This is awful. I'm getting worse on your behalf, and I'm still training just as hard as I did for the past five freaking years. And how, all of a sudden, when you make a decision on my training, I'm doing worse. It was mind-boggling. And so I quit. I filed a report, and my school, the basketball capital of the world covered it up like it was and that's a whole nother thing all the way up to the athletic director like they did not want another scandal like it was just so crazy and I didn't get to walk as a student athlete even though I competed for four plus years I didn't get to do any senior track things I didn't get my giant plaque with my pictures and my uniform in it I was mentally and emotionally abused after all this I still got nothing and I was just so happy to be out of there. I completely understand Mary Kane. And I'm just saying like, don't let your daughter go through this. You need to be in contact with her. Women's sports is totally at jeopardy right now. And nobody's talking about it. This is my experience and I still want a pole vault. Literally, like I have a tattoo on the back of my neck of a pole vaulter. It's the only thing I care about. And it was totally ripped out of my hands. And I still don't know what to do. I'm in Miami. I don't know any of the coaches down here. I don't even know if I can train with the colleges. What am I supposed to do? And after all that emotional abuse that's tied to it, it's like really hard to get back into it. Like I need a, I need a coach that invests their actual time and caring ability towards an athlete. Like, you know what a coach is supposed to do? You know, I don't even want to know if this is going on in the high school level because that is absolutely disgusting. All because they want their kids to get into college. They're just emotionally destroying them, physically just pushing them. For what? To get into college? To go through it again? Like, I think Mary Kane did an amazing thing by opening her mouth and even starting the conversation because this is so much bigger. I'm at one school. I can't imagine how many other schools have gone through this. I mean, there was that one girl at Penn who jumped off of a parking garage. I'm sure that was a little insight, but all they care about is the doping scandal, but mental health doesn't matter. Being an emotionally abusive coach doesn't matter, but it does, and it affects women's sports all the way down to youth sports. Focus on the athlete and the well-being of the athlete. And maybe they'll bloom into an Olympian, but you don't know because you don't care. You're just focusing on the end point. Women's sports need to change. It needs to change now.